Hello, happy Monday. I have a warning for you. Outsourcing your social media is dangerous. And in this episode of the Modern Marketing Show, I'm going to tell you why. I have three specific reasons why I think this is dangerous. I'm Crystal Velkaitis. I'm here to tell you what to do today to stay in business tomorrow. And let's dive in. So for any of you that are watching this live with me, welcome. Feel free to like this video and leave a comment or ask a question. And if you're watching the replay, then awesome. Thanks for being here. So the reason that I have this topic is because We get asked all the time from retailers to have us do their social media for them. They want to know, can you just do this for me? Because they're busy, they don't have much time, they might not have an interest in doing their own social media, or the knowledge, the know-how to effectively market their business. And I was just at a show in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago at the ASD show, and I spoke to over 200 retailers, one-to-one, over, uh, I think I was there for four days, and I will tell you, over 70% asked if we would do it for them. So... I came to my team and I said, we got to talk about this because I think it's a really dangerous way for businesses to be thinking. Now, there are certain things that you can outsource with your social media, but I want to tell you why I think this is dangerous. So the first reason is that it doesn't match your brand and your voice. So if you are hiring a third party to manage your social media, there's a good chance that there's going to be a disconnect between it sounding like you and sounding like somebody else. And a big part of that disconnect is going to come into the graphics and the pictures and the videos that are going to be uploaded on your social media. Because if somebody is outsourcing this, they are not in your business taking the pictures, live streaming, showing pictures of your merchandise, your store, your staff, you, the owner. And so that is the best type of content a retail business can be posting. People want to know about you and your products. So if somebody else is uh, across the country or across the world doing your social media, you still have to send them that content. And if you are not sending them that content, then they're just kind of creating stuff. It's typically going to just be like general posting that is not going to perform. It's just not going to work. It's not going to sell products. It's not going to drive traffic in. You've got to be sharing in-store content. So if you are sending content to the person who's managing for you, why not just take that time to post versus sending it to them and sharing the product information and the price and the availability and X, Y, Z, why not just post sound like you and do it in store? You know, I think that there's often uh, our retailers think that social media is going to be hours and hours every single day, and so it gets pushed to the back burner. But this is something that helps operate your business, just like having a POS system and inventory with inventory tracking and training uh, systems for your staff. You know, this should be on your open and close checklist. It needs to get done. And it could be something where you're taking a picture of the most popular product or only one left, things like that. And then you're done. It sounds like you. And then before you close, you're checking in to see if anybody responded and you are commenting back and answering their questions. So obviously, if you're doing campaigns or if you're running ads, those can take a little bit more time, but the day-to-day posting is going to be more beneficial and more effective where it's actually driving people into your store if it's done in-house, okay? So we don't want these generic posts. We need it to sound like you for it to work. Too many businesses think that they could just have somebody else posting for them and it, and it's good because they're, they're showing up. But if it doesn't, if it's not sounding like you, if it's not in-house content, it's not going to be effective. And I see many of you signing on. Hi, Angie and Grant and Michelle. Um, so I'll read these, uh, comments in a second after I make it through my couple of tips here. So next up is, <laughs> I have sat with 
hundreds of retailers. In fact, I partnered, uh, I think it was two years ago now with a company called Vera Bradley. You might have heard of them. They're a consumer known brand and they sell uh, through thousands of independent stores. And they asked me to come to some of their wholesale markets and sit one to one with their retailers doing 20 minute social media consultations. Now in those 20 minutes, I spoke to over a hundred retailers. And a lot of them had somebody helping them with the social media. Some were local, which was great. That's ideal. They're local because they could come in and, cr- and get that content. And then some were not local. Some like they hired online. And pretty much every person I talked to, every retail business owner, did not know if the person managing their social media was actually doing a good job or not because they didn't know social media themselves. So if you don't know it, how do you know if they're doing what they should be doing? So it's almost a waste of money because you're hiring somebody to manage your social media not having a clue what they're doing, if it's working or not. The only way that you can tell if it's working is if people are coming into your business saying, hey, I watched that live video or I saw this on Instagram and they're having that social media conversation. Or if you're great at tracking, which I hope you are, and you are doing product matches to where, you know, the post that your person is publishing on social media, the specific products, if those sales are up for those lines and for those products, then we have a good chance of knowing that the social media is helping produce sales. But majority of these retailers that I spoke to had no idea if it was working or not. And there's a chance that you feel this way as well. So my point here is if you are going to hire somebody, hopefully they are locally and can come into your store, get to know you, get to know your products, take the pictures and the videos that are there in your business, sound like you, and then you should also get some training as well so you know enough to make sure that this person is getting the job done. That way you're not wasting any money. Hi, Cooper Creative uh, Group. Uh, I'll read these comments in just a second. I love that you guys are posting this stuff. So, um, so then that kind of leads into the next point of, uh, you know, not wasting money and wasting time. So we waste money if we're outsourcing it and it doesn't sound like us and it's not our products. It's just not going to work. It's not effective. And I think too many businesses just want to get rid of it. They know it's important. So I'll just have somebody else do this for me. It's not, that's not going to be effective. And then the other thing is if you don't know what these people are doing, then how do you know if it's working? There's a good chance you're wasting money because what if it's not working? What if you are paying somebody to just post generic content that's not relevant to your business or not driving in traffic and not driving in sales and not getting that kind of exposure that you need? You're completely wasting money. So uh, those are my, my points. You know, I have to add in, many years ago, we managed social media for retailers. In fact, this is how I all got started, like over 10 years ago in the social media industry space. I was managing social media for a company I worked for, so I was internal, and we saw tremendous success from it. Uh, just to give you an idea, we hired a New York City PR firm and paid them $5,000 a month to, to raise awareness for our company. Okay. Now, I, that was a lot more than I was making at the company 10, over 10 years ago. And so I was on a mission to show that I can get more done on social media than this PR company. And so I did. We measured. And in six months, the PR company got us four pickups uh, for different press releases that we sent out. In those six months, I got us over 70 And some of them were small little blogs, but then others was USA Today and Entrepreneur Magazine. So we fired the big PR firm, and the way that I did all that was through social media. So then I branched off on my own, and at this point, it's like now nine years ago, and I started a company called Three Elements, and I managed social media for businesses. And my clients were all over the country. 
And we were seeing results. I worked really hard on setting up tracking on their websites and communicating. I had weekly check-in calls with my clients to see how our sales, what's the conversation, is your email list growing? I'm logging into website traffic. Facebook is top five of your referring sites. So we can have some of those tracking metrics. Um, and then as I started uh, Social Edge, We then manage retailers' social media. And, uh, one of my management clients is on this, on this live call. If you're still with me, Angie. So, we saw great success from that too. We certainly helped the retailer increase their engagement and increase their awareness. But we were sitting there saying, we still need them to send us content. Like we're texting, hey, send us a video. Hey, what's new? Hey, what sales are going on? It was constantly us like almost fighting to get this information sometimes because our retailers were so busy that they were having a hard time finding the time to send content to us. So we would try to pull as much as we could and some were really great um, and some just it didn't make it a priority, which is what happens with a lot of retailers. So the ones that were great, they were sending us content. Of course, they performed a lot better than the ones that weren't as involved as the other retailers. But we were sitting there saying, gosh, they still are spending a lot of time sending us content and answering questions. And at this time, we were charging low-end $1,500 a month to manage social media. So I know that that's a big investment for an independent retailer. So we we decided to create better training online to help empower these businesses to bring somebody in their store, somebody who already works in their store, to learn how to manage their own social media, to be more effective, to sound like them, and to save the time sending us stuff and instead teaching them what works on social and creating some accountability and some cheerleading with our groups. And so that's where, uh, you know, we got people more involved in our insider program. We've got a community called Social Edge Insiders. And, uh, that, in my opinion, is the best way to go where you're getting training. For as in, as an insider, you get hundreds of social media content ideas that work for retailers. So our insider uh, community is just retailers who need to know how to use social media to grow their business, to get more store traffic and sales. And that's exactly what I teach through video training. We have cheat sheets and we have a very active community where retailers ask questions, share successes. I share social media trends and updates. I also give some challenges. We have different themes. It's a really great way to hold you accountable, to train you and somebody on your team what's important, what tools to use, what to post, how to track, and then we help um, kind of cheer you on. So as an insider, uh, I have some good news. If you're already an insider, you you can share your experience here on our live video. If you're not, We are in a March Madness promotion, so between now and March 30th, you can save $200 on an annual membership. So normally membership is $997 for a year, but you can get it for just $797 for the year. We also have a month-to-month option too, $97 a month. No, no contract. You can cancel whenever. Um, and a lot of people ask me, why would somebody stay on month to month? Like, wouldn't they just join, get what they need and cancel? And that's certainly an option. Another, uh, but what, what I say back is I have had members for over five years with me. I have had the insider community for f- over five years. There are people who have been with me since the beginning and they stay because social media changes often. So I keep them up to date with new training, new tools. Also, they like the community. It's a support group. You never know when you're going to get stuck, what you should be posting. If something's not working, you got a bad review, what do I do? You know, we are here for our members in our Facebook group. It's very active. We are here to support you and offer some peace of mind as well. So that's included in your group. And um, and I see that Angie said, I'm going to create a little overlay. It's awesome. She's one of my insiders. Love how quick y'all respond to our crazy questions. Angie, you are awesome. And hey, no question is too crazy. Um, sometimes people worry about basic questions or advanced. I mean, look, we are here to help support you. 
And my, no matter what you need when it comes to your social, and often we, we talk about mindset stuff and marketing, other, other marketing channels. Um, and so, Let's see. I think I, I, okay, we'll move Angie off of there. I love this little overlay thing that I can do. So, um, so I'm going to head on over to my, uh, comments here and just see what's going on. Yeah. So Grant saying outsourcing social media is rife in the franchising industry. It's a huge problem. Agencies have no genuine connection to the brand's audience. Yes, Grant. I totally agree. And now I just lost what you, <laughs> We're posting it. It went away from me. Um, but you also say additionally, outsourcing social media to someone prevents, oh, my comments are doing such weird things. We say no connection to the brand's audience. They are lousy with customer service, right? You know, how can you trust somebody to take care of your customers, to know how to talk about your products when they are not even in your industry? Like, I say this is dangerous because there are a lot of people that will manage your social media for you. Um, it's a big growing industry, like a lot of social media managers, and I'm, and some are great, and I used to do it, and we saw results. Like, so, you know, it doesn't mean it can't be done, but it's really important that you're doing your research, that this person is involved with your business. Ideally, they work at the business because they know the products, they know your customers, to Grant's point, um, and then they could create that content that's internal. So, Grant, thank you so much for chiming in, and I hope you've been well. Uh, Michelle, hello, Crystal and crew. Um, so Michelle, uh, yay, you saw me speak with Vera Bradley in Philadelphia. So we're going to stick on the topic here, um, about just outsourcing. That's what we're going to focus on today, Michelle. And Cooper says, as with any professional, make sure they understand your brand. Yes. So that's exactly why if you're an insider, we have what I call the customer profiling worksheet. And so this is where you really step into the shoes of your perfect customer. And ideally, the store owner fills this out, or maybe the store manager, if they really know your customers. You fully fill this out, and then you hand that worksheet over to whoever is going to be managing your social media. Ideally, they're local or in your store. And then they can really learn your customers, step into their shoes, know how to find them on social, know what ads to run, know what kind of content to be posting. So um, so thank you, Cooper Creative Group for adding that in. Um, and so Michelle was saying, oh gosh, the comment here, for some reason it will cut off. Um, for relevant content, is it necessary to create lengthy posts? You know, not always, Michelle. This is cut a uh, lengthy post on a blog to explain benefits of our products. So Michelle, that, that goes into kind of a deeper strategy about content and what you're posting. And I cover a lot of those, um, those topics. Like we have a topic content that connects and converts in our insider program. It really depends on the goals. Uh, you know, having a blog post where you are highlighting the benefits and really talking about different products. Blogging in general can have some benefits from an SEO perspective, a search engine optimization perspective. There's certainly a strategy to it on how to, what keywords to use and how to get more search traffic. But if you have the time to do that, um, it can be a great way to, to increase your SEO traffic, especially if you sell online. Um, so the lengthier post or the shorter just depends on what the post is, what the product is, what the goal is. So there's a little bit of strategy behind there. Um, hi, Julie says hi, Social Edge team. Uh, and then Grant, gosh, I wish my comments it, it went away. They all are going away. You know what, you guys, I'm going to head over to this. I'm also going to post in um, a link to the, let me put this away, a link to our insider program so you can learn more and take advantage of our uh, March Madness promo that's happening right now. And um, let's see. So we've got, uh, so Julie says, Michelle says, thanks. You're welcome, Michelle. Julie says, hey, Social Edge team, quick comment. It's definitely been great handling social media for the tea store. I had a customer write a lengthy comment with like five to six questions, some unrelated. I wonder if it would have been better to answer her in a private message. But anyways, I, I, digress, I digress. It pays to know your brand, your company, the voice. Exactly. Um, again, like this is something I've been thinking so much about this topic, about how I think it truly is dangerous because 
you know, it's a, it's, it's changing the mindset. Traditional marketing, we could send off our advertising and our marketing to an agency, maybe a, a local agency that was going to create our radio ad, right? They were going to write our 30 second or our 60 second ad for us. Um, or we're sending off the print design for a local billboard, um, or for a ad in a magazine. And we could send those things off and have it designed and have them do it. And they send it over to us for approval to make sure, you know, it's how we want it to look. But often we could outsource that stuff to these companies. And these companies would have an internal graphic designer. Um, and, you know, they could, they could easily design for you versus you being this graphic designer. And back then there weren't great tools to create online, to, to create designs, right? You had to learn the, the software, which is very complicated, but now with things like Canva, it makes it easier. So it's different now. You know, you're not just sending it off to the advertising agency or the radio station to do it for you. This is social media. It is instant. It is now. It is timely. It is you. It's your products. That's really hard to outsource for it to be effective. So it's my goal for your social media to actually produce results. Like, don't just be out there because you're, you think, ah, I gotta be out there. It really has to build your business. That's what I care most about. I don't want you wasting time and money and then not building your business. So, Julie, thanks, went on my little rant to add on what you were saying there, but I just totally agree. Um, and, oh gosh, Grant says, I've actually heard several times that clients say, we hired you to be a social media so we wouldn't have to entirely defeats the purpose being social. Exactly. I know. So, so some people watching this might be like, ah, oh, like major eye roll. Like I just don't want to do the social media. I don't want to learn it. I don't care. And I know, I know some people feel that way and that's okay to feel that way. Who on your team can do it? Who can be enthusiastically involved? Who knows your products? Who knows your culture? Who knows your customers? And if you don't have that person yet, then I would be on the hunt for that person. This is the way to build your, your business. This is where consumers' attention is being spent, is on social. So it's very important for you to show up here. Um, Elsia says, another jewelry store, IGO, we met at the show, had the same outsource manager as us five years ago, and hundreds of, of course, this just um, cut off, okay, hundreds of other jewelers, and she posted a happy-go-lucky post 30 minutes after the Boston bombing, oh my God, where they were located, which was ill time and insensitive. Um, yeah, ooh, that one is really tough. So, and this is, you know, I, I, done some training about uh, what to do because the challenge when there are um, crises, like when things happen like this, right? Unexpected attacks or whatever may happen um, or mother nature, things like that. If you're scheduling your social media, so there's like two things that are, you know, you got to be on the lookout for here. If you're scheduling social media, you need to immediately go and unschedule because you can look wildly insensitive when you're posting something that's positive or, hey, come into our store today or like the happy-go-lucky thing that this got posted for jewelers. Um, so that can really hurt your brand and your reputation. So, and that could come from within. So if you are scheduling, you got to make sure. Now, if you're outsourcing, very good chance they're scheduling. They're probably using some automation. It's all generic posts. That's not going to help build your brand. Um, and if they're not located where you are, where the store is, like LCS says here in Boston, um, they don't know what the heck is happening. So they, it's just going to, the content's going to go out. It can completely damage your reputation. Elsia, thank you so much for sharing that. That's so sad that that, um, that happened to that business. Okay, you guys. So I think that we covered everything. Um, tried setting it up. Okay. So you guys are awesome. Thank you for all the participation here. I went a little longer than I normally do in our modern marketing shows, but this truly is something I'm very passionate about. Uh, I really, really want businesses to take their social media seriously. 
It is a serious, powerful channel to market your business on. And when done in-house and done right with an actual strategy can significantly grow your business. And then growing your business has all of these wonderful ripple effects, right? You have a more successful business. You have happier staff. You can expand. You can, your family might be happier. I mean, all sorts of ripple effects happen when we have a, a stronger business, a happier business. And then just having like peace of mind that your social media is taken care of and you know it's working. So make sure that you get some training and support. And of course, uh, we can help you do that here at Social Edge. And I would love to have you as an insider if that's something that you think you need, the training and support. We are here for you. So that's all that I've got today, you guys. Have a wonderful, uh, wonderful day. Grant's is time for drinks. Grant, I think it's a little too early. <laughs> it's only 1030 here. Um, and then Angie says, seriously, couldn't stay on top of social media without y'all. Try it. Angie, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I am so thrilled to have you guys as an insider. And go have a great week, you guys. Remember that social media can be simple. And together, you and I, we can make it happen. I'll see you next week on the Modern Marketing Show. Bye-bye.